Welcome back everyone. Live CUBE coverage here at Red Hat Summit 2023. Also Ansible Fest folded in. This is our show wrap up. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE with my esteemed co-host this week, Paul Gillen. Paul, been great. Rob Stretch, analyst breaking down all the action from the CUBE Collective. Guys, great show. Thanks for uh, teaming up. But, but we, I think we did a great job. A lot of all interviews came through. Good interviews today. Uh, lots of great uh, customer interviews today. Unbridled, they were out here. The Red right, Hat lets them come and just and just go. They, they yeah. don't uh, they don't script them, and they're refreshing people to talk to. I love the open collaboration because it extends to the philosophy we just said. They don't script it. They're not like trying to handle them and like don't say this. Uh, I mean, literally no PR people. We have a handler to make sure the cube runs smooth. But Red Hat's an open source company, Rob. They're about transparency. They don't, they want to be out in the open. They're, anything that looks or perceives as hiding the ball. They're against. I, I, and I, I thought it was great in the fact that they really went through and looked at the fact that it's, it's about simplicity, it's about transparency, it really truly is about a community that is open source, and I think that's the key to their success so far and why I don't think anybody can replicate what they've built here. This is fantastic. So I want to get your thoughts on what you think the show was to you guys. Um, I was doing little TikTok videos, the reels for, for Kristen, Nicole. Hey Kristen, thanks for all your support and team back at the ranch. The AI infuses everywhere, so the AI theme was, was everywhere. I thought that was solid. Um, and then they had the whole edge thing was big, scale on the edge. And then the small little Dell announcement where they got an appliance coming, I thought that was bigger than it was impacted, so it was kind of slid in the, the second day. But you got blocking and tackling day-to-day -day stuff that's got to happen with Red Hat. Then you got the AI surge over the top. Seems to be the big show, and obviously Ansible on the first day, day one of the Red Hat Summit was, I won't say dominate, but primarily Ansible. It's all about so Ansible. Very interesting tell sign, automation, cloud scale, what do you guys think? What, was, what's, what jumped out at you, Paul? Well, I get the sense, I'm having been to several Red Hat summits at, at this point, this is a company that's very confident in itself, and I think its confidence has grown over time as open source has taken hold. I saw some statistic that 97% of commercial software packages now have some open source component. Uh, it clearly is, is, is has won. It's, it's the way software will be, at least infrastructure software will be developed in the future, and I think Red Hat feels vindicated by that, and they're moving forward with confidence, uh, believing that they, they have good structure in place for listening to their customers. Customers clearly are crazy about what Ansible is doing for them. We had some just uh, uh, super enthusiastic users on, uh, on the program today, and uh, Red Hat seems to be in a groove and knows what its customers want, and it is responsible. They got a swagger, and they got a spring, a, a spring to their step. Quick question for you, I'm reading the headline here from a while back. IBM closes landmark acquisition of Red Hat for $34 billion, defines open, comma, hybrid cloud future. Are they on that? I mean, we heard hybrid. That's and they what put, it is. And they're putting numbers on the scoreboard. Yeah. They're confident, they're putting the results out there, customers, products, partnerships, open source exploded, and I think AI was a nice tail when it kind of came in. Rob, I mean, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, again, it's that multi-cloud edge hybrid has one thing. So it's not only that open source is one, it's that the right place for the right application as people transform them. And I think we heard throughout the whole, the whole thing, especially from the end users, like Paul was saying, very clear on where they are in their journey. I think people are still early on in their journey, but I think they're looking to that openness, and some were very conscious of that they had tried and failed. Yeah. And this goes back to the repatriation. Is it repatriation or is it being brought back so it can be put somewhere else again? And I think it's that case, which is key. And there's a point, yeah, to, to elaborate on that, is trust. You know, you talk to customers, I've talked to many, many CIOs <laughs> over the years, and they don't, as a, by and large, like the vendors they work with. They're suspicious of them. Yeah. And I just don't sense that in talking to customers here. There seems to be, because of the openness, the, inher the openness that's inherent in the Red Hat culture, there is a trust between the company and their customers that I just don't see very often. It's a partnership too. When you have that kind of trust, that means there's a relationship that's not the skeptical, oh my God, I'm getting gouged. What's the price increase going to be? Lock right. in. 
Let me ask you a question, Paul, because you know you you, you talked about you know you talked to a lot of customers. When IBM bought Red Hat, there was a lot of conversation. We were kind of we kind of got it because we were covering what Irvin was doing before he became CEO. We kind of could see that kind of coming. There's a lot of critical analysis of IBM, like betting the ranch on Red Hat. Um, was it worth 34 billion dollars? I mean, you know, people, I think the jury's still out on that. I but. mean, I compared it to like, you know, when Google bought YouTube. YouTube just did 41 billion dollars in revenue. All those people who said YouTube was over, overpriced at a half a billion dollars. I mean, it's not YouTube isn't Red Hat, but what might seem big, given what's happening here, we saw the IBM, John Granger came on yesterday. I mean, this is a lift for IBM. I mean, they get multi-cloud here, potentially, with, with Red Hat. Certainly, their last few earnings uh, reports, IBM has cited Red Hat as a significant driver of new business and uh, it seems to be, uh, and as well as a growth engine for the company. So at this point, it seems to be working out well for IBM. I have to admit, I have my, my doubts about <laughs> it when IBM paid $34 billion for a company that, you know, that, that makes software that you give away for free. <laughs> uh, it didn't seem, to, didn't seem to compute at that point, but. Uh, it's a long game play. I think they saw something in that customer relationship yeah that customer loyalty that they could take advantage of. You know, Rob, one thing that came up that Paul's kind of getting to the point where we kind of can see the visibility into the, maybe the, the, the crazy genius the, of the deal is you hear hybrid, talked about hybrid one, totally agree, but the game is, the game is multi-cloud, right? So like, I think the end game here is, we talked about multiple environments, we tried to, it didn't really hit the mark on this yeah. <laughs> interviews we did. Well, oh yeah, can you differentiate between environment and, and cloud? Because you know you get cloud with stacks, Azure stack, Amazon stack, and then multiple environments. That question didn't land very well, but it brings the question up is that from hybrid it goes multi-cloud. And if you give an, an open, compatible, distributed layer, Red Hat could be the winner. I, if they could know. extract all the value in their ecosystem for multi-cloud. I, th I think if you look at it, the fact that Azure was on stage, Amazon was on stage, and you, you talk about how the GSIs are looking to this and building massive practices around OpenShift as their Kubernetes platform, because it is everywhere and can be everywhere, I think that becomes really intriguing, especially with MicroShift and Mini and all of these pieces that could go to the edge, um, far edge as we talked about with Steven earlier today. I, I think it gets really intriguing at, does how, what impact does this have with Kubernetes in general? This could thing. put IBM in the category of a hyperscaler. Because if you're a hyperscale like AWS or Azure, you're not out there promoting multi-cloud. That's your property, you're an, your own island. Right. Like, okay, you want to be on premise for your workloads, but you got to know I'm going to work with another partner. IBM could be that glue layer in the hybrid that strings it together with Red Hat at the edge. Now, I, I think I VMware, agree. maybe Broadcom might be thinking the same thing, Rob. What do you, yeah. what, what do you guys think yeah. about this? I, I think so, I think, I think that is the whole Broadcom play with VMware, uh, in fact, I wrote a piece on it last year about that, and I, I look at this as, they. I don't, it'll be interesting to see if they can execute, that's a whole different story, but I think the openness at which OpenShift has really been that flywheel for them, and I think that they're leveraging off of that, calling it OpenShift Data Science, OpenShift AI, and getting these different pieces that then tie into Ansible, which, again, the automation and making it simple is key. I'm still somewhat mystified by what is IBM and what is Red Hat. You know, because I, we, we had uh, uh, the some, tail wags uh, the dog. We, we had <laughs> the representatives from Dell and and HPE, which are strong IBM competitors, on here, and, and Red Hat has good relationships with those companies. Um, you know, is IBM going to be the multi-cloud broker, or is Red Hat going to be the multi-cloud broker? And IBM drafts off of that business. Uh, John Granger from IBM said that he had their got an I Amazon team, they got an Azure team. I think they're thinking ecosystems, Rob. Right. I think IBM's thinking, I want to play in all ecosystems because, you know, Dave Vellante says this all the time, you know, when they lost the software business, you know, and then the cloud, they missed the cloud with Bluemix and SoftLayer, they have a great services business and they could be the, the Uber Uber global GSI for amongst the hyperscalers to create kind of some sort of maybe standard, now I'm stretching, but like, that's a 3D chess match. 
Yeah. That's, that's a string you pull, it has to work or it doesn't work. Well, I, IBM should be the best Red Hat Systems integrator out there, right? They, yeah. they, are, they are the ones who can put those pieces together for customers who want, who want flexible cloud and, arrangements. And, and, and it's interesting too, you mentioned that, um, that, that piece. If you look at Accenture, they were, we had the Accenture ADOS guy on, we cover Accenture, we cover all the GSIs. They're all building their own cloud with their own differentiated servers, or we call them super clouds. So they're going to have a set of a tech, a tech stack that they're going to offer their customers. So right. the differentiation is going to be how well you can integrate into the cloud. It, it, but I think that that's exactly, and it's from, they hit on this in every keynote. It's about the platform. It's either platform engineering, it's platform automation, it's platform, platform, platform. And I think it's how do they simplify that platform to be everywhere yeah. so that they can be that, so you can build your stack. Yeah. You want to, you know, Accenture, HCL, yeah. Atos, what have you, build your stacks, have at it. I'm, I'm very skeptical on the whole platform wars because remember the old days when OSI came out, they, that was about killing SNA, DECnet, right. proprietary NOSes, or network operating systems, yeah. which at that time, if we could kind of go down this cloud route, it's similar things. Azure stack is different than AWS stack. So, you know, DECnet, SNA, I mean, you got to get yeah. some standards. Well, TCP IP wound up being the Wound up doing yeah. that, that Kubernetes, point. yeah, the center but, but point. I think that's that's exactly why I think it's going to be interesting to see: are there enough? Is there enough momentum with you know Azure Kubernetes service, Google Kubernetes ser uh, engine, or EKS uh, over at Amazon yeah. uh, to really rival what OpenShift is doing across all of these? Because EKS anywhere, which is their on-premise version. I've never seen it anywhere, <laughs> so mm -hmm. that, which is funny about the name. You go and look at some of these other ones, supposedly with Azure Stack on-prem, mm -hmm. you have AKS growing. I don't know, I don't see them really pushing that, that yeah. narrative, so I think to your, to your point, is Kubernetes, that ecosystem, going to help? Well, we'll see. We'll see, I mean, you, got, you guys did an interview with David Linthicum at Deloitte, who's also wow. a thought leader. What was his angle on things? Uh, did he have a, a perspective on Red Hat? Well, I mean, he's, he's a big fan. I mean, he's been, uh, he, he's here, and he's, uh, he leads the Red Hat partnership. I think he sees Red Hat as, uh, as increasingly the power broker in multi-cloud uh, environments. So the, the big cloud providers are not going to budge uh, on, on Owning, you know, owning their walled gardens, and and Red Hat is in the catbird seat for customers who want yeah. multiple clouds. It's interesting, Chris Wright, who's the CTO, came on a early uh, later today, earlier today. When I pressed him about the open source business models, he kind of reacted and and made a profound statement. Actually, when I said, you know, in open source, I was using open source as a thing. Like in the open source community, he's like, no, no, it's not a, it's not one thing. Not, well, and he was community. very particular to call that nuance out. I was using open source community like, oh, the big AI wave is coming into the open source community like it's one, like one thing could topple over. He's like, no, it's very decentralized, very organic. I thought that was notable, Rob, that he brought that up because we've been asking yeah. that question to everyone. He's the first one to kind of say that. Yeah, and I, I think that's the interesting thing is where does AI fit in this whole, the whole uh, spectrum of all of the open source and is that something they can capitalize on or are they too low level, I, you know, and, and to your point about, are they, is Kubernetes as the platform, a, you know, can they take advantage of it and use it in their, as a uh, part of the tooling, but. Well, they've got light speed and they've got, they, they've got uh, 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 insights for. Yeah, and the uh, IBM research people are doing a lot in that, and I think maybe this is really where some of that IBM research DNA does really tie together the two companies in a, in a way that's, yeah. you know, one plus one equals three. Did you guys hear much about security in over the two days? Not a lot of fanfare, but kind of like the classic line that it's in there. Well, when, when we talked to uh, TransUnion uh, about their, their move to the cloud, they're making a fairly major shift to the cloud, they said the main reason they did it was security. Yeah, and we also, we also talked to, uh, Darren and a couple others, and, and they did on this main stage talk about SIG store, which is really supply chain, security supply chain. So they had some major announcements and there. And Christian Uber from 
Etas. Etas, yeah. He talked about it. they hardens the top for yeah. them. So maybe they're not bragging because they kind of got it. <laughs> I, I, I think it's it's there's been a lot of announcements about that over over the past few months. I think months, the big, the big think, story was you know, the supply chain. Yeah, I think it's a huge story though. I mean, almost to the fact that, you know, there was a lot of supply chain attacks on open source and it's an open target. And I think maybe it's gotten so much press, maybe that's why they haven't really highlighted it as much. This market, that market is kind of a layup for, for Red Hat though, because they've been, you know, they have these very sophisticated supply chains they've built over the years using open source and they're just packaging them. Yeah. They're just packaging and selling them as a service. Yeah, I think, yeah. I want, I'm wondering how that's going to impact the container and Kubernetes market. I think, I think OpenShift AI could be, could do some damage to the pecking order, Rob. Yeah. What, I, uh, you know, I mean. I do think it's important what we heard from a couple of Red Hat uh, guests about AI is they're very focused on domain specific AI. Uh, this idea of, you know, the whole inter tra training an AI model on the whole internet has its flaws. And they're focused, they're not focused on trying to duplicate that. They're using AI for just Ansible, you know, or they'll use it just for, or for OpenShift. Yeah, or or just for my shampoo at Ulta, which <laughs> it was a very interesting conversation about how do you do that for recommendations within there and keep your first party data to secure. Guys, it's been a great show. We got a lot of customers that came on. I guess final question for each of you. Bottom line, your key takeaways from the show. Rob, we'll start with you. I, I thought the energy was fantastic and really the thread that was woven around simplicity is key. To, to really execution. Uh, th this company is going to be a major player in the future. Uh, it is, it, it's doing, it is on all the right tracks and I think it is going to emerge as a major broker in the cloud yeah. world as well. Yeah, I mean I think to me with Chump that was the AI's transfused, you know, I think the multi-cloud is, is going to be a big play where it kind of clicks together. They've kind of got hybrid, right? I think how they, well, how they commercialize RHEL in open source I think they could shepherd open source with the AI wave, and I think if they get that with the hybrid, the tail IBM is Red Hat. Yeah, tail so, wags the dog. Well worth. Okay, guys, thanks so much. That's a that's the wrap. Red Hat Summit 2023 in Boston. Folding in Ansible, big story here: AI, distributed computing, hybrid, multi-cloud, simplifying the user experience, developer productivity, all that in the open source way Red Hat Summit is closed. Thanks for watching. <laughs>